state of nature is a state of equality. People are more or less equal physically and intellectually in a state of nature. And it's a state of, uh, in which we all have the right of nature. We all have a right to anything deemed needful for self-preservation, or as Hobbes will sometimes call it, a right to everything. It is also, according to Hobbes, and in part because of those first two features, the state of nature is also a state of war. Now, what we're gonna discuss in this video is why it's a state of war, how that happens, why the state of nature, the state of equality and liberty or of equal basic rights is also a state of war. To start to begin to see why, <clears throat> it's helpful to return to the right of nature for just a second. The right of nature is a right that we have to anything deemed needful for self-preservation. According to Hobbes, the desire or the concern for self-preservation is perhaps the driving motivation of human beings. Uh, the way Hill usually put it, is that we have, uh, not in terms of desiring self-preservation, but in fearing the opposite. One of the driving motivations of human beings is the fear of untimely death, right? That would be the opposite of self-preservation. And so the kind of basic primal motivation of human beings, according to Hobbes, is for self-preservation. It's uh, for avoiding death, this fear of death. This is a kind of primal passion, as uh, Hobbes will call it, of uh, human beings, of human nature. Given this kind of overriding concern for avoiding untimely death, given the equality of human beings, physically and intellectually, and given the fact that the resources we need in order to survive, things such as food or shelter or whatever, given that those resources are scarce, that's the key point, a state of war is going to ensue in a state of nature. The state of nature will be a state of war. Because people are fearful of untimely death and because resources are scarce, the state of nature will be a state of war. Now, let's delve into a little bit more detail to see how that works. Hobbes, uh, Hobbes describes the state of nature as a state of war or explains why we should think of the state of nature as a state of war by citing what he calls these three natural sources of quarrel. And what we're going to do now, I'll put them up there quickly for us, and then we're going to go over them in detail, kind of illustrating them, trying to see um, uh, how exactly these sources of quarrel work, what exactly he means, why they would lead to a state of war. So the first one he calls competition. Um, he describes it as invading for gain. So we compete over things, we compete over gain basically, or we compete in order to gain certain of these scarce resources. This leads to quarrel, right? We want those scarce resources, we compete over them, we quarrel. Second one, a little bit harder to understand, uh, uses the word diffidence. What he means is a kind of um, Contemporary usage, that might be a kind of shyfulness or, or bashfulness or something like that. That's not quite what Hobbes, mean. he me, uh, Hobbes means. He means something by diffidence. He means more kind of um, we want to stay away from other people. We don't want other people around us. Something like that. This desire is going to lead to quarrel. And the kind of motivating... Uh, reason for that quarrel is safety. So out of a concern for safety, we don't want other people around us. And this is going to lead to quarrel when people come around us. We'll talk about it in detail. And then last and kind of least important for our purposes is uh, glory. Um, think of it as something like standing, respect. Yeah. And if someone slights you or, or whatever, something like that, right? Uh, uh, 
you might quarrel with them for the sake of reputation. And Hobbes thinks this is important in all kinds of ways, explains all kinds of things about human behavior, but it's going to be less important than the first two for our purposes. So let's go through these in order now in more detail, trying to understand how exact, what exactly he means by these things and how exactly they give rise to a state of war, how exactly they give rise to quarrel, as Hobbes calls it. So, uh, for these, to, to illustrate what he's doing, I'm going to use uh, an example. I'm going to use me and you. Yeah, me and you. And so imagine me and you are in a state of nature. That's what we're imagining, okay? <clears throat> and we're gonna, I'm going to try to show you how it is that me and you in a state of nature uh, are going to naturally be led to quarrel, uh, according to Hobbes. So we're going to do the first one first, right? So of those three, we're going to look at competition, then we'll look at diffidence, and then lastly, we'll look at uh, glory. All right, so let's say, okay, so we're in a state of nature, me and you, okay, fine, everybody else, uh, state of nature, and I just kind of come walking along, and, uh, you know, I had the good fortune, uh, apparently, of coming across an apple somewhere along the way, that's nice for me, you need an apple in order to survive, so I'm pretty happy about that, so I'm just walking along with my apple, and then you kind of appear out of the corner, I guess, right? So that's you over there, there's me. <clears throat> well, you see that apple, right? And an apple, well, that's something you need in order to survive. That's some food. And food is scarce. A resource like that is scarce. Well, <clears throat> by the right of nature, you have a right to that apple. You have a right to anything deemed needful for self-preservation. I have a right to it as well, right? I, I need it for my self-preservation. But you also have a right to it. It doesn't matter that I'm holding it. It doesn't matter that I have a right to it. Everybody in the state of nature has a right to that apple, even though I'm holding it. Now, moreover, uh, in a state of nature, you are fearful of death. And in this particular case, what's going to be uh, important is that you're fearful of starving. Yeah. You, uh, one way that you very well might die in a state of nature is you starve to death. You don't have enough resources. You don't have enough apples, enough food or whatever. And so you see that apple, you have a right to it. <clears throat> and so what are you going to do? You're going to invade for gain, so to speak. You are going to invade for the apple, yeah? That's the first source of quarrel. We compete over uh, things like apples, over these scarce resources. We fight over them, right? It wasn't much of a fight. You kind of won that one pretty handily, yeah? Um, you took the apple, right? So given our right of nature, Given the, and so that you have a, you have just as much of a right to the apple as I do, <clears throat> given our fear of death and given the kind of more or less equality among us, although you're kind of taking it to me in that fight there, uh, we're more or less equal, right? And so you're going to invade, you're going to compete with me over the apple, you're going to fight me for it. Yeah. And ultimately, and this is what Hobbes would think, you're going to try to kill me for it. And we're going to see why, you know, why wouldn't you just kind of knock me over the head and take it? We'll see why in just a second. He, Hobbes thinks you're going to try to kill me for the apple. That's how it's going to work in a state of nature, at least. Right? So out of this desire for self-preservation, this is what ends up happening. Okay, poor Jeff. New scenario. Now we're going to look at diffidence, right? So let's say there you are. Yeah, that's you still. And uh, you've managed to come across the apple tree, right? And so you have all these apples, right? And so you're no longer worried about having, uh, you know, you have your gain, so to speak. You have all of these apples. And so you're going to be good for a little bit at least. Okay, great, perfect. And so there you are with your apples. Great. And then... I don't know, I'm just taking a stroll or whatever. I just kind of happen to walk along and there I am. 
I don't say anything like, hey, give me those apples. I'm just walking along. I don't, uh, I don't make a move for the apples. I'm just kind of walking by. Well, what's going to happen? Hobbes' idea is something like this. There you are with your resources, your apples, and you see me, and it could be anybody, right? I'm just using me just for the sake of the example, right? But it could be any other human being. What are you going to think? You're going to think, well, look, there's that guy over there, and he's just like me. He's looking out for himself. He's hoping not to die prematurely of starvation or any other means or anything like that. And so he's going to probably see my apples and want to take them, right? That guy, Jeff, he wants to take my apples, I bet, because he's a human being just like me who's fearful of death, who wants to preserve himself. And moreover, right, although they might not be thinking this exactly, but Hobbes would kind of put these thoughts in their mind, right? Jeff's got a right to them. By the right of nature, Jeff has a right to those apples, just as I do. It doesn't matter that I'm standing here and that I want them or whatever, right? I have a right to them, but so does Jeff. And so you are going to think to yourself, well, geez, Jeff is going to probably try to take my apples and he might hurt me to do so, right? He might attack me in order to take my apples. I mean, he doesn't have a weapon on him or whatever, but I don't know, maybe he could, you know, start pummeling me or whatever, right? And take my apples. I don't want that to happen. I don't want to die in the first place. I don't want him to pummel me or kill me or anything like that. But moreover, I don't want him to take my apples. I want them. I want those apples in order to survive. And so what are you going to do? You are going to preemptively strike, right? You, even if I don't make a move for your apples, you are going to attack me. Just my mere presence there, right? You see someone like me, you're going to attack preemptively because you know that I'm out for self-preservation. And so I'm going to try to take your apples. And you know that I know that I might need to kill you in order to take your apples. And so you're going to preemptively strike. This is what Hobbes means when he talks about diffidence, that we invade for safety, right? To keep ourselves safe, to keep our resources safe, or the resources that we want to use. Yeah? And so even though I haven't made any move for your apples, I'm just walking by, you just see me, you're going to attack. And, you know, I'm not just putting it all on you. I would attack you, too, for the same exact reasons. We're all going to be thinking the same exact way. Right? So as soon as two human beings see each other, it's not just that one of them needs to be holding an apple or whatever, and then there will be a war. No, but as soon as they see them, as soon as they see each other, they're going to attack each other, according to Hobbes, because they are going to see each other as threats. Because they know as soon as one of them has a resource, the other is going to attack and try to take it. The other person is competition for resources. And they know that the other person knows that. And so there's going to be immediate conflict as soon as one of them sees it, the other. Yeah. And so we want to stay, we want human beings, other human beings to stay away from us. Their mere presence is a kind of threat because we know that they're fearful of untimely death and so we're going to take our resources that they compete with us for those resources yeah taking you you know so you've taken me out in here right and you're going at it still yeah uh well that's good for you that's good for your self-preservation by taking me out that's one less competitor for all those apples and everything else yeah that's what Hobbes is getting at here yeah. So you're not just going to kill me to take my apple. In this example, I don't even have one. You're going to kill me. And so it's not for gain. You're not gaining an apple by doing this. You're gaining safety, right? You're doing this for safety. Those are the two most important drivers of war of this, you know, this, th those are the two most important considerations for understanding why a state of nature is a state of war. We all have equal rights to everything. We're all more or less equal. And we are all motivated primarily by this fear of death. We're motivated by self-preservation. Those motivations combined with those rights, with that right of nature, leads to these outcomes leads to you attacking me and taking my apple, leads to you attacking me 
even if I don't have an apple, right? Out of concern for your own safety. That's Hobbes' idea. This is how human nature works. This is what a state of nature would be like. Last source of quarrel. <clears throat> Let's look at how that works, right? So the last, and so this one's not as important, but whatever, right? So let's say uh, it's a state of nature still and whatever, we're all just kind of standing around like that for some reason. Nobody's got any apples, so that's not a worry. Um, okay, fine. Well, well, maybe things will be okay now, right? Nobody's got any apples. And so no, and things are not gonna be okay now. Uh, because I very foolishly, I walk up on the scene and I insult you. I say something insulting to you and makes everybody laugh at you, right? Damages your image, damages your reputation. Well, how are you gonna respond to that? You're gonna attack, according to Hobbes, right? Uh, out of a desire for reputation, you are going to uh, attack me in this way, something like that. It, this would work even if um, uh, I hadn't insulted you, right? You're going to want to perhaps portray yourself as strong and fearful, as to be respected, as not to be messed with. And so you might attack me even if I didn't insult you or whatever. But this is the basic idea, right? And so you're going to fight me because I, was, because I insulted you, because I was being a jerk or something like that uh, for the glory of it. Okay, fine. Something like that. Hobbes kind of sums up his view of the state of nature in what is the most famous, most famous quote from the Leviathan. Hobbes claims that in the state of nature, life is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Now often, so this is a often quoted um, a passage from the Leviathan. And often when it's quoted, uh, it's shortened a bit. Usually people say life in the state of nature is nasty, brutish, and short. Uh, but he actually, there's, there's not just those three items, there's five. You know, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Uh, why? Well, because it's a state of war. Everyone is just attacking everybody all the time. Yeah? And we've talked about why it's going to be like that. Uh, why it's going to be a state of war. So it's solitary. Human beings by nature are solitary, sole individuals. We're out for ourselves and our own self-preservation. But life is also going to be poor. And, well, why is that exactly? Um, think of it like this. This is something that Hobbes emphasizes. If everybody is always attacking everybody else like this, right? So the depiction of the state of war there that I have before you is a little inaccurate because people likely wouldn't just keep stabbing the person they already killed. They'd start stabbing each other, right? And so these other, but that's too hard to animate. I'm not going to animate that. So anyways, <clears throat> in a situation where you have war like this between every individual and every other individual, you're not going to, there's not going to be any place for human development for things. Uh, so what Hobbes uh, points out, there's not going to be any place for things like agriculture. Because let's say I, you know, planted some stuff. I tried to start a little farm there. Yeah, agriculture. Well, that's a waste of time because, I mean, first of all, while I'm doing all that, you might just come up and start killing me, right? Out of uh, uh, fear of, of, for safety, right? That second source of quarrel, diffidence. Um, so that could happen. But uh, even if that doesn't happen, if I fend off all invaders while I'm, you know, planting beans or whatever, when those beans come up and sprout, you're just going to come and take them. Yeah. Or a bunch of people are, not just you, right? You're not the only jerk. Everyone's a jerk. So everyone's just going to come and take them. And so, of course, I'm not going to do something like that. Uh, first of all, I don't have the time because I'm fending off all these other invaders and attackers or whatever. I'm always looking behind my back, so I don't have time to just sit there and plow a field or whatever. But also, I would never enjoy the fruits of that field, yeah, because other people would just come and take it, and I can't defend the whole thing all the time. And so, 
course, I'm not going to plant a farm. But uh, I'm also not going to be able to, uh, human beings more generally, are not going to be able to engage in any kind of technological innovations. Uh, those kinds of things require some leisure time, right? They're not going to be able to do, engage in any kind of uh, real thoughtful reflection, any kind of scientific investigation. Yeah, fine. They might have very crude tools like your spear there or whatever, right? Nice spear. Uh, but they're not going to be able, you know, to develop much beyond this kind of very crude technology. And so uh, there aren't going to be arts or sciences, no agriculture, no arts and sciences. But those things, arts and sciences, agriculture and so on, that's what makes our, that's what really raises our quality of living, right? And so the quality of life in a state of nature is going to be really bad. I mean, it's just going to be people scraping by. There's going to be hardly, uh, it's not going to be a very uh, comfortable existence at all, right? And it's going to be uh, nasty and brutish. We're all, just, it's be war, right? We're going to live like animals. Um, you know, there isn't going to be much in the way of housing, for example. You, I don't know, you duck under whatever tree you can, you or whatever, it's not going to be comfortable. It's going to be animalistic. And of course, it's going to be short. Yeah, and you can kind of see the reason for that before you're right there, right? That guy's, well, that's a bunch of me, I guess. My life was very short, my lives. Um, and so there's a kind of, kind of cruel irony to the state of nature, right? What's motivating this war is a fear of premature death. And what does that end up leading to? Premature death. <laughs> yeah. And so Hobbes thinks the state of nature is just about the worst thing that could possibly befall humanity. There is no worse state of humanity to be in than the state of nature. And we would do anything to try to get out of it to try to leave a state of nature because it's so bad, right? Our kind of primal fears are realized in the state of nature. How exactly do you get out of it, however? That's very, very tricky, according to Hobbes. And we're gonna start looking at how exactly we do that in the following videos.